bail for Disha Ravi uh, today and just a day ago it was bail uh, for Varavara Rao who is one of the accused in the Bhima Koregao case and uh, joining me is uh, Indra Jaising, a senior Supreme Court uh, advocate. Uh, she's also someone who's uh, the lawyer for Varavara Rao. Uh, Indra Jaising, thank you for joining me. Now, we've just seen these two orders back to back, bail for Varavara Rao yesterday, uh, for Disha Ravi today. It's interesting because it comes at a time when there have been questions about whether the judiciary is doing enough to protect civil liberties, individual freedoms, and then you have these orders. Yes. Um, I think uh, we have seen a consistent pattern of misuse of laws, uh, more particularly the law relating to sedition and the relating to UAPA, that is acts of terrorism. And I personally feel the judiciary has woken up to the fact that laws can be abused and misused. And I think that is what accounts for the kind of orders that you're seeing today. If you take the Disha Ravi bill or uh, when you, when my state, 22 year old girl of country, which applauds this kind of attack. And I think uh, the judiciary has woken up to the fact that there is a rule of law in this country, at least I hope so. <clears throat> and that it's their job to make sure that the law is not abused. I, 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 will, uh, I will tell you a little bit about the Varavara Rao judgment in a little while, but this is my, yes. what, I, how, what I feel about the uh, fantastic judgment on the Sharabi. Right. On Varavara Rao, I wanted to ask you, because the bail seems to be largely based on health grounds, but does it have wider implications as well? See, Srinivas, uh, the wider implication is that the courts are willing to look at uh, conditions of detention of prisoners. The judgment refers to the Nelson Mandela rules. Uh, what it says is that the courts can pierce the whale of the prison bars if they come to the conclusion that the fundamental rights of prisoners behind closed doors are being violated. Mm. Now, you know, surprisingly, our Supreme Okay. We seem to have forgotten all this jurisprudence, which is, which seems to be just locked up in our law books. And I think uh, the, the main if achievement, if you can call it that, of our team of lawyers, including me and Anand and various other people who worked on the case, is that we unlocked that door. And what we said is that prisoners don't lose their fundamental rights simply by virtue of incarceration. Yes, they lose the right to freedom of movement, mm. but can you torture them? No. Uh, can you deny them the right to help? No. So the significance of the judgment is that the right to health is primary. Hmm. And, and the, court, the court has said that if we send him back to prison, we are endangering his life. So that's a very, very important consideration. The second one, of course, is the hmm. recognition of the fact that the existing conditions in our prisons this, we were dealing with Taloja jail, but all other jails are no different. Can you believe it? That they had only three Ayurvedic doctors on duty in, in that prison when they're dealing with people with amazing amount of comorbidities in the mm. time of the pandemic, okay? Mm. Mm. So, so the court is saying that, there, uh, that the, uh, the health condition of these people who are above the age of 60, 70, 80, mm. I mean, deterioration in health is natural for anybody at that age. It's normal. And to send such a person back to prison is to, is to endanger their life because mm. there is an in incompatibility between the right to health and what the state is able to provide in its prisons and that entitles. Of course, the really important thing about this judgment is that it bypasses the UAPA Act completely. Hmm. And it, it is actually saying that your fundamental rights are peremptory norms. 
Right. And uh, a, a UAP which says bail should be denied cannot be allowed to prevail over that. It's the judgment which protects and preserves the right to life, as I think all judges should I wanted be to. I'm it, very pleased. In fact, I wanted to ask you about that because you're right. The, the judgment does say that continued incarceration will violate Article 21, which is the right to life and liberty. Uh, it also says that we don't appreciate or agree with the NIA stand that no relief should be granted because of the gravity of the offence. Uh, would this have consequences for some of the others who are also accused uh, in the Bhima Koregaon case, people like Stan Swami and so on, who also are fairly elderly and have health ailments? It has obvious implications. Stan Swami's uh, bail application on medical grounds is being argued before the NIA court, and I'm sure they will cite this judgment before the NIA court as well. But, you know, beyond the obvious uh, benefits that this judgment has for all prisoners in this country, in fact, in one of my tweets, I said, okay, so Varavara Rao had medical help and he had, uh, you know, lawyers that came forward to protect mm. him, but there are thousands of others in our jails can we not spare a thought for them what are the facilities in prison to ensure that our prisoners are you know skin diseases yes. are so rampant in our prisons i can't even begin to tell you if anybody were to do mm. an investigation mm. into what goes on i read an article actually in the wire which says even the caste system is alive and thriving in our prisons but let me uh, let me also say apart from the obvious implications yes. you know very well that today there is a report on the table about our now that the evidence against these people has been planted through malware okay and that issue is definitely going to the bombay high court okay so what i want to tell you is you know you build this bogey of abc is a terrorist and then you say you create an atmosphere of you know we can't touch these terrorists you know and that's the so-called gravity of the crime hmm. what is the gravity of the crime what evidence do you have against these people nothing except as we are right. now Though, saying plant yeah but but in yes the court of law to decide whether the evidence is planted or not right but in in conclusion Sorry. though in conclusion, Indra Jaising, is it correct to say that this bail, though, largely deals with the question of his health and how uh, he cannot continue to be incarcerated on those grounds? Uh, the charges against him, uh, you know, part of the Bhima Koregaon case, as you mentioned, the fact that they were inciting violence and they had links to Maoist organizations, those still stand and those still have to be successfully challenged by, by you and his lawyers. Definitely. And we we mentioned you, please read the judgment. It records very clearly that Varavara Rao and his lawyers said we are ready to stand trial. OK, mm. so it doesn't bother us that the charges. Stand. What does bother us is that these people, unlike people under other laws, are unable to get bail because of the way in which the UAPA law has been drafted and the way it has been. By the way, the other thing you need to know yep. is that the judges record that the delay in the trial itself yep. is a violation of fundamental rights so okay. two and a half years hmm. and you know the the charges have not been framed as yet yeah. what happens to our presumption of innocence okay right. so in that i think the judgment uh, makes history it it uh, it opens a window. All right. I'm not saying that this is, you know, liberation for, for everybody, the 16 people who have been accused in the case. But the but the the the, the fight for justice has begun. OK, the fight for justice has begun. And as you said, the and courts I, have started to wake up. Uh, so interesting times. We're out of time. Thank you very much. Well, indeed. Indeed. Yes. Indra Jai Singh, you want a last word? Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I think I think courts have work, woken up because they've seen a pattern of abuse of law. I said somewhere else, when you use law to break the law, you're living in a state of lawlessness. And I think the courts can see now the lawlessness in front of their eyes. And well, that's it. This the Bombay High Court said that as a constitutional court, we really need to rise to the situation and protect the fundamental rights of citizens. It's it's a really really very important judgment i'm okay. very pleased with it all right okay thank you very much indeed uh, indra jessing for that thanks very much